A, a little explanation for the beginning and ending of this video. Uh, I recorded the main bulk of this video when I was losing a lot of uh, sunlight and I also kind of forgot I made it <laughs> for about a week so I kept forgetting to come back and finish it uh, so this explanation just exists here to explain that. So this one's going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's daylight savings. Don't have a lot of time. The sun is going down and thus so is my natural lighting. The artificial lighting is terrible so I don't like using it. Alright, that means I gotta not make very many tangents. See, I'm already doing it anyhow. So, the other day, I watched this video by uh, Wong Fu Productions called Just Another Nice Guy, which is a sequel to a video that they made called Another Nice Guy, um, or, or a Nice Guy. And I, I only watched like the first two episodes, but that's all I needed to see. Because um, I watched it, and I thought to myself, this was clearly written by a woman. Now, <laughs> probably wrong. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. Um, but I guess the men who were involved with this, they clearly, you know, they drank the feminist Kool-Aid. They drank it. They, they, I say they drank it, man. They just, they took that straight home. Mm. Just like that, dude. Just straight to the head. Because I remember there's this one scene in the first episode that just made me burst in the laughter. And that scene was uh, this. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I heard everything. So we can still be friends? So our protagonist uh, met this girl named Audrey. And after trying to court Audrey for some period of time, he decided to tell Audrey his feelings were true. And Audrey's reply was a nice, crispy... Oh. So after he recounts the events of what has occurred between him and Audrey, there's a moment in the car where he decides to confront Audrey and, and, and ask him, like, what, what, what happened? Why are you doing this to me? So, a, this exchange happens, and this is when I just started laughing. Never anything more. So, are you saying you were just being nice to get me to like you? Yes, 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 yes. 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 <laughs> now, Here's the thing. I know some people think like this, particularly male feminists and more liberal cuck boys and women, particularly. And so I decided I wanted to make this video where I finally kind of put this to, to bed. I mean, I won't because I'm not a popular YouTuber, but I think a video like this needs to exist. And that's a video on entitlement, the so-called male entitlement. And how it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as male entitlement. It would just be entitlement. It's just how people feel. Now, I'm pretty sure I've made a video similar to this in the past, but I'd have to look at my video catalog and I forgot to when I started recording, so whether or not I have or haven't, I'm still going to make this one because I have some more stuff to say about it. And the first, let's talk about what exactly is entitlement. Now, an entitlement, by definition, is you obtaining something or getting something based on what you're owed, right? Um, so when I invest money into a company, I am entitled to the profit because that was the entire point of the investing. You know, something to that degree. That's our Webster Dictionary of Entitlement. And thus, the way a lot of people use entitlement, particularly male entitlement in feminist circles or liberal progressive circles, is the idea that men feel like they are owed sex from women based on the amount of activity or the amount of time invested into the woman that they've been trying to court. It's probably the most succinct way you can label male entitlement. Now, the reason why I don't really feel like it's accurate to consider this to be male entitlement is because, one, anyone and everyone would feel that way based on their time invested into any person, and thus it's not a particularly male thing. It's just that males have to invest more into courting women based on the very nature of what maid selection is. But two, mostly because most men don't feel like they're owed anything. They're more saddened and hurt and disappointed from a lack of reciprocation. And that's not the same thing as feeling owed something. Now, the whole entire point of picturing 
a male entitlement as a concept is very simple. It's just to completely remove responsibility for women's part in the whole courtship thing that occurs in the the old friend zone or the whole nice guy phenomenon. The idea is to focus on the male aspect or the men aspect and what the men are trying to do to get women. It's to make them look like they're bad guys. You only did all of these nice things so you could have sex with me. You only did all of these nice things for a relationship. Now pause, those are actually two completely different things by the way. And which is why I'm not a really big fan of this whole male entitlement thing. If someone was nice to you, and they're courting you so they could have a relationship with you, well, the chances are that person genuinely likes you because they're considering making a family with you, you dumb bitch. <laughs> if some... <laughs> it's like... It's like, do you think about words that come out of your mouth? If they want a relationship with you, then clearly they want something consistent. No, I mean, some people are bad at having relationships. Some people only like to chase, okay? Some people only like being courted or they only like talking to girls. They only just like giving them sweet nothings and they date them and then they just fall flat. Just pff, nothing happens after that. They don't care anymore. That's a separate issue. And I can talk about that some other time because it's important to talk about and I just feel like I should acknowledge that because I know it's a thing. But on the surface level, if your complaint is someone is nice to you so they can have a relationship, well, a relationship kind of necessitates that the two people fucking like each other in order for it to keep going. That That's kind of, yeah, that makes perfect sense. There's, there's nothing nefarious about that one. Now, if you're saying someone was nice to you just so you could have sex with them, this is a two-step that I'm not a big fan of. On the one hand, people treat sex like it's not a sacred or intimate act that you're supposed to be doing with close people. They treat it like it's a toy and that it's fine to do it with strangers. But then they'll two-step and say, well, manipulating people into sex is wrong and you shouldn't be nice just so you can get sex from them. And then it's like, I mean, of all the things that you could be doing, being nice to get sex kind of is a lot better than the alternative and that is spitting game at drunk bitches. <laughs> at nightclubs or existing as an attractive male douchebag that just manipulates and uses women like I mean of all of the things like sure you could say being nice to have sex is a bad thing and I would agree with you it's just that if you treat sex like it's a commodity and it's a toy it's very particularly strange at least to me that you then backstep and say hey that's wrong but like using sex as a toy or a commodity with strangers is okay it's like I mean, yeah, sure, you can do that, but it just looks really fucking weird when you two-step sex that way. Like, either it's an intimate act that you should do it with important people, or you should treat it like it a commodity and give out or dispense it at your leisure. It's just weird that your leisure is that being nice then is wrong, but just being attractive is okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which kind of brings me up to this point right here. It's really strange to me that people will criticize the so-called nice guy for putting an effort to court women. Like, to, to manipulate the whole conversation of nice guys to make them look like they're nefarious individuals. Now, I will pause to say that a lot of people, when they describe nice guys, they mean passive guys. And I always try to make an effort to make it clear that I am referring to someone who's being kind, not someone who's being passive. And since these two things are oftentimes conflated, in this particular conversation I'm about to continue to talk about, I will be referring to them all as one and the same, nice and passive, those guys that we all know. And that being what they're doing to get a relationship is the only option they really have. And that's why it's really strange to criticize them, or I always find it particularly strange to criticize them, right? Because the idea is that you're criticizing nice guys for being nice to women and trying to convince the woman to date them. The only problem is, that's the only fucking option they have. Because when it comes to mateship, when it comes to courting anyone, men or women, and this particularly affects women, men more than women, just on the nature of what women want from men, um, but the long and short of it is, you only really have two options when it comes to courting people, Excuse me, and that is, you either exist as the person wants you to be, so you just be tall or you just be handsome, like you just exist as they want you, or you convince them with the strength of your personality that even though you're not initially attracted to them, you still have value you can provide for them. And option B is what most men have to fall on in nature of what mate selection is 
for women because the unfortunate truth of the matter is when it comes to the vast majority of women it's not all women and I know it's not all women but in general women are more narrowly attracted to men especially younger women than older women are and so most younger men have to try harder to date younger women now as women grow older and they hit the wall it starts you know <laughs> Their standards start loosening up just a little bit, and women that have low self-esteem, their standards are oftentimes kind of all over the place, depending on things. They're a little more specific to talk about. But in general, what women want specifically from men is a lot more narrow. So men have to use option B a lot more op option, often than option A. Most men don't exist as women want them to be. So men have to convince the woman to date them with the virtue of their character. And that's where the whole nice guy phenomena comes from. If women liked men as an end to themselves, if women were just initially attracted to men as you were, you wouldn't really have to work all that hard to convince them to date you. That is the nature of being a nice guy. Now, of course, when you recognize that that be the case, if you ever have to recognize that you have to put in effort to convince a woman to like you, that that alone should tell you to stop trying to do anything about her, you would realize there is fuck all you can do when it comes to dating. Henceforth, we have the black bell and incels. I know a lot of people are not fond of incels, and they're not fond of their depression and their depravity, and they're not fond of how sad and depressed they are. They're not fond of how mean and cruel incels can be to women. But, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, we must recognize that your only options when it comes to dating people is either exist as they want you to be wholesale from the beginning, become what they want, or convince them to date you despite the fact that you're not what they want by virtue of your personality. And when you recognize that by virtue of your personality you will not convince someone to date you, you realize you have no options. That is where the black pill comes from, by the way. I just intellectually broke down an incels manifesto. You guys are all welcome. Moving forward, the reason why I've never really been able to co-sign with this nonsensical bullshit is because <sighs> there's no delicate way to put this. This is all women's fault, okay? It is. It is. Or maybe it's not women's fault, but women certainly have a hand in this, especially when it comes to the whole nice guy phenomenon, when it comes to the whole friend zone phenomenon. Now, a lot of people always say that if you're in the friend zone, it's your fault. You did that. No, no, you didn't. If the woman wants you, she fucking wants you. Like, let's be real, okay? Let, let's let's not, you know, let's not fucking split hair hairs here. You know what I mean? Like a woman, she's not gonna put you in the friend zone if she wants you to date her. She's she's going to try. She's gonna put forth some degree of effort, okay? She will. Um, I know, just not even just from personal experience, but I just know from fucking reality, okay? If you're in the friend zone, it's because the woman didn't want you, but she's fine with being your friend. Like a woman will never like not be your friend that's not normally how women operate they define with having males around them and absorbing resources from them or getting things from them and this is kind of the crux of the problem here and this is where male entitlement kind of breaks down and why it's even a phenomena or a misunderstood phenomena that feminists and male feminists and all that see and that is because men have to put effort to court women and women are oftentimes receiving the efforts of all of that courting Whenever the man does not get a return from his investment, it can cause frustration. And no matter how you slice it, and that's just kind of reasonable. I mean, if you invest anything into anybody about anything, if you don't get a return, you're probably going to be upset about it. Now, this isn't the same thing as saying that the person feels like they're owed something. As I mean, some people might feel owed. It wouldn't be a particularly male entitlement thing. It would just be them. They feel like they're owed something. But no matter how you slice it, effort put into trying to court someone, effort into trying to convince someone to date you, that fails apart after a long period of time, even after you've been getting some signs or some reciprocation back from that woman, is painful. No matter how you slice it, it hurts. I don't care. You, you know, I don't, you can be Superman, but I bet you, if Superman was trying to court Lois Lane and she was like, "Sorry, Kent, I don't want anything from you." That shit will hurt that nigga's feelings. It just, it just, it be that way sometimes. So this is why I say part of this is kind of women's fault because no matter how you slice it, unless you're stupid, 
as a woman, like you kind of have to know when someone is courting you. You 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 can't be that fucking um, oblivious. You just can't be that dumb. Maybe some women are that. You know, some people are that stupid. Maybe some women are just that dumb. But like the whole like the whole like come on like the whole come on, like come on come on come on. This is why it's frustrating because there's no way. Anyone could put that degree of effort into trying to court you as a woman, and you just not fucking know. It just doesn't. You, you can't not. You can't not know. You cannot not know. I'm not even sure if that made any sense, but I know you guys get what I'm saying. Some girls, when they're getting courted, will absolutely take the free dinners. They'll take the gifts. They'll take the help. They'll take the emotional uh, support that males give them. They'll take it and they'll take it and they'll take it and they'll be fine with taking it. And I know how a lot of women feel. I do. I understand it because I, I'm not, I'm not daft, okay. I might be abrasive, but I'm not daft. From a woman's point of view, I get what a lot of them are saying that if some guy likes me, I didn't have anything. Look, I didn't make him like me. I just, I was just there. If some guy wanted to court me and he wanted to give me all this stuff, I didn't ask for any of that stuff. I didn't ask him to do all of this. I didn't ask him. I didn't ask. I did not ask. So because I didn't ask for him to do all those things, I don't owe him anything. I get that. And you're right. You're, you're not wrong. If you're a woman and you think that you don't owe anyone anything because you didn't ask for all of that favor that he gave you, for all of that stuff he gave you, for all that time, I get it. I understand. You're not wrong. But you're also not honorable because there's no way you didn't know what that nigga was trying to do. And that is where the frustration comes from. This is why men feel betrayed. This is where male entitlement comes from. It's because we as men clearly indicate that we like you, we clearly indicate that we want to date you, and instead of ever snipping that bit in the bud, you put the friendship label on it, and you just say, he's my friend, he's my brother, this is just how the world is. Now, maybe some women are just so oblivious that they just expect that the world just give them thing by virtue of their existence. Could be the case. But that is why it's incredibly frustrating. And that's why that scene from the show I showed you guys was hilarious. So, in conclusion... The reason why I don't really think that male entitlement is much of a thing is due to the fact that specifically categorizing the feeling of wanting or being owed something is not a uniquely male thing anyway. The only reason you would primarily find it in mateship between or courtship between men and women is because males, just in the nature of the male-female dynamic, have to approach women more and because women are oftentimes valued for what they are and men are more valued for what they can do, men are stuck in a very weird area where they either have to prove themselves worthy or they have to already be attractive wholesale no matter what. And then from that point, you can go up or down. There really isn't anything that you can really do to become attractive to some women. You just kind of have to exist. And because that there really isn't much you can do in terms of convincing people to like you or like women specifically because that's normally what's going on. Most women don't normally have to convince men to like them. They just kind of have to exist and be a, you know. Um, the idea of that it is somehow wrong to try to court women or like prove yourself worthy just seems stupid to me because that's the only real option that you have. And if you recognize that that option by itself doesn't really work, then you really don't have any option at all. So, and also what also needs to be taken into consideration is a lot of the time women 100% benefit from men trying to court them. And a lot of women don't really do much of anything to prevent the courting from happening. So they always are fine with taking resources and taking all the things men offer under the guise of friendship. And then they feel like they don't owe men anything because they never asked for it. Although they totally, you know, were ob oblivious, so they say, to the men trying to court them. So it, it just is very disingenuous to me that any woman could be that naive or could be that stupid to men trying to court them and then backflip and then say hey that's not fair for you to you know expect anything from me so i uh, the, the whole guise of male entitlement at least to me seems like a way to always vilify men for using the only option that they really have 
realistically because all men just aren't born mythical herculean like <laughs> heroic patriots of beauty you know or attraction to women or just like these whatever the fudge women want that's a whole thing unto itself because men just aren't normally oftentimes born that way there's really nothing we can do apart from just like try to prove ourselves worthy and that just in and of itself is not functional because you know you can't really build attraction for women like almost at all if you there's just nothing redeeming about you so it just seems to me to be a way to vilify men so women never have to feel guilty about the fact that they are as shallow as they love to paint men out to be that's what it oftentimes seems like to be the case because again the more i intellectualize it the more unfair it seems to say that men are entitled for you know doing exactly what men ask them to do be nice guys be good guys you know be charismatic do all this stuff and it just doesn't have any return at all, but women will take all of the stuff that men give them, you know, for free without feeling like they have to reciprocate. That just doesn't seem right, you know. So, um, that's basically my video. I know this one was a long time coming. It took me a while to find the time to get this ending point here. But, um, moving forward, there are some more stuff to talk about when it comes to this topic, like when it comes to dating and just like your options. I do think that's really important to really discuss. And, excuse me, I think, um, a really critical look needs to be put onto the idea of the black pill that I had mentioned earlier in the video and like in relation to like how authentic that is to the reality that is women and their mate selection choices because I do think something critical is uh, there that really needs to be highlighted that really isn't oftentimes enough and that very critical thing case in point this entire video here uh, I say the entire, but a huge portion of the video is that there really doesn't seem to be much a man can do to push his sexual attraction to women of himself. As much as you only can raise your social capital in relation to other people and your resources, but like you as the end of a man is not appreciated by a lot of women. You know, and that, that can't really change as much as just your circumstances around you can change. And I think the same thing is true of women, and I guess should be discussed from both ends of the spectrum as well. And which I will do like in the future. But today, I do want to leave you guys off with that very critical thought and that understanding. And so in the next couple of videos, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the red pill and the black pill. And just like kind of go take it from there. I say in the next one, but just in the future, I'll go in there. So with that being said, I should let you guys got something out of today's video. And if you did, man, go and click the like button. Yeah, shoot, go and click that. Oh, subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.